Hello and welcome to Procedural Wells. In this tutorial I'll show you how you can use Gaia Pro and Gina Pro together to create awesome levels. Okay, so first I'm going to go Window, Procedural Worlds, Gaia, Show Gaia Manager and let's just create ourselves maybe a four terrain medium world. So here we go, four one kilometer square terrains. Create. And let's choose our alpine meadow biome. Sweet. Now let's stamp our biome. So this uh, 4K Hills one is quite nice. I'll just zoom out a bit here. And I'm just going to modify my stamp. So one of the cool things about Gaia Pro is essentially every stamp is an entire level and you can mix and match them and do whatever you want with them. I want a bit of water in my scene. I've got a bit of structure in my mountains here. And then might just lift it a little bit. And maybe lift my sea level up to say 40. Mm, drop that down a bit, maybe 35. Oops. That'll do. Cool. And go stamp. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is use Guide Pro to add in my flying camera my procedural world sky, my post processing, blue ocean and so on. Now these are all optional, but um, they're some fairly nice defaults for most environments. Cool, so we've got some ocean and we've got plenty of space to make stuff in. The next thing I'm going to do is add in some structures. So if I go into my content packs, actually up here, I've already installed my Flooded Grounds content pack and my Gaia Pro content pack. I'm going to my spawners here. And let's choose a church. So what we're seeing here is the actual size the church will appear in my scene. And the little, uh, the angle you can see there is the direction in which I'll spawn my church. So just spawn that in. And what Gina has done here is not only place the church, but flatten the terrain around it. Maybe a small town and drag that into a scene Again Put that in there You notice it's quite a complex structure. We've just placed here and what the heck we'll put a few of them in here Something you might notice is I'm changing the orientation of the spawn structures that's done with shift left click and drag Nice little set of structures there and um, maybe we'll put our church back in here. Where is our church gone? Here it is. Let's add some roads. So what I want to do is connect all of these things together. So now we're using a Gina feature. I'm going to add a road spline and first of all let's bring our church in from over here control left click and you can see we're actually placing a spline into our scene here and we might um, run this out around the back and just run that road off over there and then maybe what have we got here front gates over here so I'll select that spline point and I'll just bring a road connection down here and I can just select that and move it around and change it up any way I like and we'll bring another intersection off here Maybe here. 
There we go. And maybe keep buzzing it around through here. So you can see with Gina Pro, it gives you a fair bit of flexibility in terms of what you can do with your road here. You can change things, you can move things around, you can tweak them and so on. And let's just, whoops, don't want that one. So I'll just hit the delete key, get rid of that node. And maybe I'll just select this one and continue on through here and then back up that way. Make that a little bit less severe. And control click to join them there. All right, so we've joined. Oops, we've got a structure out here. So let's make another intersection. And bring it out near this property. Maybe just go take that off over there into the distance. Make another T junction there. And if we wanted to make things a little bit more complex. Let's make it a more complex intersection here. Oh look, something just decided to interrupt me. So you can see we can do quite a bit with our roads. Let's go and carve a road through our mountains over to this other property over here. come through this mountain pass here what I want to do is actually carve into the mountains so I'll just push this blind down now at the moment you can't really see what's going here but if I select the carve extension what we're doing is a visualization of, of how we're going to carve into this terrain and what I can do is increase the smoothness so just make it a bit wider there a bit nicer um, let's maybe lift this area up a bit just because we can and let's have a look at what's going down through here maybe carve it in a bit more if we wanted it to move it a bit we could so what you're getting here is a real-time gpu compute driven visualization all right now we won't bother, bother about that one out the back there so now that I've got this all set up, I'm just going to go carve. Boom. And now Gina's nicely carved into our terrain. Sometimes you might get a little spot where the road is a little bit too uh, jagged. So you can actually get in and modify this. There you go. Fixed. Same deal. This one looks all right. They're all looking pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is add some lights to my roads. So coming with Gina uh, in the prefabs, Gina asset samples, spawners, we've got some street lamps. So Gina comes with a bunch of um, nice assets that you can use. So let's uh, grab our street lamp and drop it into our spawner extension. And when we look on our road now, you can see these little green dots. This correlates to the flow rate of this asset. So what we've actually done is we've actually dropped a Gina spawner that's been saved as a prefab and we've put it into our system here. Now let's just go spawn. Gina has now put roads all the way along our, our um, or lights all the way along our roads. Probably not that useful in the middle of the road. So let's make the offset position four meters. So now we're off to the side of the road. Let's align this to the spline and then offset our rotation. So now our street lights are all nicely aligned along the spline, which is cool. And next, because I'm showing off what the Gina spawners can do, let's add some road barriers. And 
and again you can see that they're spawning every 4.2 meters let's go spawn and now we've got a lot of edge barriers to our road here let's align them to the spline and let's set their rotation to minus 90 and then set their offset to be 3.8 and now they're all nicely positioned along the edge of the spline the other thing we'll do is we'll go conform to slope and snap to ground and oops snap children snap to ground so now they're all nicely snapped to the ground and then what you can do is you can just manually delete the ones that have been spawned on your road access to our little um, church here we've got some other cool prefabs here so let's have a look we've got some layouts uh, let's put a uh, roadblock at the end of our road here and perhaps um, some road works cool little road work sign here and maybe put some some traffic lights so it's sort of i guess you might get the the sense that there's actually a fair bit of stuff we've got in here all right so we've got some roads now now that we've done with our road we can actually turn them into plain old meshes. So if I click on my roads again, I can click on my road extension here and hit bake road. Do I want to bake my road? Yep. Boom. And now we've got just a plain old set of meshes for our road. And the beauty of this is you can then do whatever you like. If you, at the moment we've got some, um, some, road materials and so on and we're just using the standard shader the intention is to provide you with a lot more options and do paths and so on and so on but um, the beauty of this is it's just a mesh you can take it into your favorite modeling program and do whatever you want all right so we've we've added some roads now let's add some rivers and where should we add them things we're going to hang in around here and go exploring here might add a river here so we have a couple of different ways of adding rivers. Now I've added the roads first because I wanted to carve the roads. Now I actually want to carve the rivers under the roads and maybe drag our waterway off down there towards the sea. So one of the things you can do is you can go into Gina and right click Gina, add river flow, and then just hit control click where you want the, the head of your river to be and hit create river flow now we've already modified our terrain here so you see the river flow has come down to the road but then gotten stuck so i'll create my river flow my gina river spline but then i'm going to edit manually now you'll notice it's sitting on top of the terrain even though we have followed the low point in the terrain there's no actual river valley here so we need to carve one and that's what the carve extensions for but before I do that, I'm actually going to tidy up and reroute this river. It's going to be a bit artificial, but I'm going to bring the river actually down through here instead. So I'm just going to, because this is just a genus blind, I can hit the delete key and just tidy, you know, get rid of those extra nodes. And then I might also hit the simplify button, which just smooth things out a bit. And then I'll start hitting control click and I want to take my river down through here. So control click. Control click, control click, control click, control click. So I'm actually manually routing my river. And I'm going to have it, mm, the lay of the land looks like it can go down there. Now this is very contrived, but um, it's really just to show you what's possible. Uh, nope, you don't want to go there. I'll actually go back down through here. all the way down to the sea all right now 
let's fix this up. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use our carve extension again. And I'm going to drop it down to maybe minus 0 0.8. And then I'm going to make it a bit wider, maybe 0.3 meters wide. I'm going to smooth it off a bit to the edges. And maybe get it away from our building a bit here. If I go too far, I'm going to start messing with the um, the roads. So maybe make that two a little bit more solid there. There we go. So you can see we've visualized where this will go. And let's carve it. I could add in a bit of noise, but for now we'll just carve it. And boom, we have created a nice river valley in our scene. We can now go back to our river and we can increase the river depth. And the cool thing is I did the river after I did the road. So it's dug the hole underneath our road here. So we've got an, and the road system, and I've baked it now, so the, um, the spline's gone, but the road system is basically keeping its shape. All right, now we've added some cool structures. These are created with the Geno Decorator system. We've added some roads, we've added some lights and things, and we've added some rivers. Well, let's finish this with Gaia Pro. So I'm gonna go back to Gaia and my Gaia tools, and I'm gonna get my farm here. I'm gonna turn off the mushrooms. Mushrooms, the setting on this particular spawner is great for a non-Gina terrain. But if I do this, we will get a lot of ferns here and they will slow my scene down. So let's just go and spawn our biome. If you remember, this was four one kilometer square terrains. I prefer to make more smaller terrains than fewer bigger terrains. All right, I'll just maximize my scene here. And here we go. We've got a rather cool environment that we've just created for Gina and Guy Pro working together. And what I'm going to do is actually change the time of day because I love this feature. If you notice our lights here, I'm going to go into uh, Guy Runtime select my lighting and select four o'clock in the morning why just because because I can no major reason it's a bit darker at four o'clock in the morning so now what you can see is we've actually got the lighting system in Gina Pro being controlled by the lighting in Gaia so let's see if we can find one of these cool little village environments that we spawned in here. What have we got over here? A bit of graveyard. The lights in some of these compounds are also being generated by Gina and managed by Gaia. A bit of a church. Awesome little environment. Oh, it's the end of the road. And I think as the end of the road probably means it should be the end of this video. Alright, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching.